In this video, we're going to fine tune a document AI model, Layout LM version 3, on the Chords Receipt dataset with the idea that we're going to be able to do some token classification. The format for this video is I'm going to spend a, few, a minute or two here with an introduction to what we want to cover, and then we'll work through step by step loading the data set, preparing it, defining the metrics, defining the model, and then train a model. The second part of this will be then working on inference from the layout LMV3 model. Now for background, layout LMV3 is a document AI model. It's a very popular model. The first version of this layout LMV1 kind of was very revolutionary. That one I should clarify is available for commercial use. The layout LMV3 is not available for commercial use but it's still useful to learn from for what's possible. The data set I'm using today is going to be a receipt database called Cord. It's a well-known data set. It has about a thousand receipts. And what we can do is we'll be able to extract different pieces of information, such as the total of a receipt as well. So let's jump into this and start working our way through this notebook. All right, let's work our way through the notebook. As usual, there will be times when things go slow, and I'll just fast forward the video through that part, but just know that actually going through the notebook takes a bit longer than this video. We'll start by right, installing the packages we need, data sets, transformers. The next step is logging in to the Hugging Face Hub. Remember, you can go over here, grab your token, and bring that in. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to push the model that we create into the Hugging Face Hub at the end, so that way we have the model to go. I can double check here, make sure I'm logged in. The next step is loading the data set. Niels already has a data set built out that we're going to start from. This data set takes a little while to load, so be prepared. It takes about 10 minutes, it has some large image files in there for the processing. Now, once that data set comes in, we can take a look here. It has three different partitions in it, a kind of a train, a validation, and test. We can see the contents inside there. There's an ID field, words, the bounding boxes, the tags, and the image. If you need to know how to prepare a data set like this, Niels has a notebook here that you can take a look on how to prepare the data set. For today, I'm going to skip that and focus on the training piece. All right, if we go in here, we can take a look and you can see all the features. One challenge with this Cord data set is there's a lot of classes. You can see there's 61 classes. They're using the bio tag format, so you can see the B, I, and the O here. Um, if you want a simpler data set, if you're just starting out, the, the is it Fun SD one, the Forms one there, has just a few classes, so it might be an easier starting point, but I really wanted to tackle this receipts, so we're working on this one that has a ton of classes. Um, we can go ahead and just pull up t and look at an example image here. I just grabbing from the train the first image that's available because right in Python it starts with a zero, and we can take a look and see what that receipt looks like. Going through here, if we want to kind of see an example of what. Um, one looks like where we can see exactly kind of what the words looks like, the box, the bounding boxes here. Um, you can see how they're defined as well as the classes of the tags are here. Okay, next, let's now prepare the data set. Um, Niels again here has created a preprocessor here with the layout LMV3 processor, which is a kind of a huge help along the way. So we're going to start by grabbing that. The next thing we're going to do is create our ID2 and label2 mappings. We're going to need this for inference. We're going to know, need to know both ways, which way our labels work, and that's what's done. You can see there's some other pieces here where we just kind of reference the index, the text, and the boxes column name. If you've prepared your data set slightly differently, you might have to adjust those as well. Sometimes, for example, a lot of times people will put image path, and so you'd want to change that to image path and then later um, add that pre-processing for the image path, and I'll show you that in a second. But you can see, we go ahead, 
grab the right tags. Here's the, the final tags that come out. We can kind of look at those ID tags and label lists, make sure that that's working as well. Next, we'll prepare a function that we're going to apply to the entire data set to do, to do this pr processing on. So we'll see here is some of the processing um, that we'll do. If you, for example, were using an image path, here you would add a little bit of code to read the image from the image path. Here we already have the image that's there. All right. Next thing is, right, what are the feature setups for it? Again, you can kind of go with this as well, assuming you have the same kind of features. Now that we have exactly what the pre-processing is, we're going to apply it to our data sets. Um, here, um, we are applying it to the train and the test data set. If, for example, you want to just do a subset of it, I did some feature curves where I just did a subset. You can see this line that I've commented out is for that, where instead of you know, all 800 in the train, I just wanted to do 300 like that. So give it a second to see, run. And now let's see what the effect of this is on the train. We'll see now the train data set has the pixel values in there as well because it's been pre-processed in the attention mask, ready to go for us to be able to use it. And we can take a look at it and see what it looks like. All right, then we're going to go ahead and set that format to PyTorch. I'm using PyTorch here. And as a final check here, you can check out some of the sizes, make sure everything matches up. One thing you'll see is the images here are 224 by 224. So we are taking those big resolution images, bringing them down to 224 by 224 for it to be used here. Um, we'll talk about in another video, I'll do some other techniques like donut which don't necessarily downsample it, which use a high resolution one. There's, of course, the cost of the memory for that. But just so you're aware of, that's what it's doing with the images, and that can sometimes cause a loss. Don't think there's anything else I really need to note on that. Next, let's talk about kind of defining metrics here. We're going to go ahead and grab it here, the sequence evaluation from the data set. We can load that in, and we're going to go ahead, and here's the logic for computing the metrics. We're just going to focus here on a couple of metrics here. It's going to return is the precision, the recall, the F1, and the accuracy as well. And it's just being, it's just, this bit of code here is it's just going over all the different tokens that we have, except we're going to remove, of course, and ignore the areas where those bounding boxes aren't happening. And this is where you can see we have the minus 100 to skip over places where there isn't any of that. All right, let's keep moving through. Next step is defining the model. We're going to use the LMV3 base, so we want to grab that pre-trained model as a starting point because we're going to be doing some fine-tuning here um, as well. Now, for the training arguments here, let's go ahead and load that and I'll walk through some of the training arguments I have here. Max steps here, 2,500, might differ depending on how many you need for your particular model based on your data set. Um, the batch size here is going to vary by GPU. You don't want to, if you get too large of a batch, it could affect your memory. For me, when I was running it in Colab, the five worked well. After the model's done, I want to push this back to the hub so I can kind of have that final model out on the Hugging Face hub. That's what those next lines are. We have a learning rate. I stuck with Niels' strategy of kind of that, that one to the negative fifth. I also like to evaluate the model as it's running. And so here what it's going to do is every 250 steps, it's going to run the accuracy and give me the kind of stats on an evaluation data set. I like this because I can just kind of check and see how it's going kind of as it's building through that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and instantiate that trainer with the model and arguments. I, you can see some pointers here. I'm pointing it to the train data set, the eval data set, right where my tokenizer is, um, all that. And then we'll give that a second to go. All right, now we're set up, we're ready to train the model. And you can see here, I have three commands that we're gonna run. 
and it's gonna one is gonna kick off the train. After that, I'm gonna push it to the hub, and then there's an evaluate um, function that we can run that gives us the summary metrics. But I want to show you a different way of doing that. So we'll run the first two commands for you here. Well, we're only gonna run the train. I'm not gonna do the push to hub because I'm gonna be impatient for the training piece. But let's go ahead and kick off the train. And at this point, the model is busy training. I could probably see my resources here and right, hopefully the GPUs will go up. And there you see it going up as that's going in there. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to wait for one iteration of this because I do want to show you how it does the evaluation, um, in this case, every 250 steps. So we'll fast forward to that. At this point, we've got to 250 steps, and what I wanted to show you has shown up where we can kind of track the progress as we're watching it here to see at step 250 exactly how we're doing on the various metrics. And as this model continues to build, this will let us see it because I like to peek and understand what's going on as well. Now, over time, this this model on this data set probably takes about a half hour or so to build in my collab environment. It will continue building until it hits the end. And at that point, then I can do the push to hub and push that out. But at that point, I'll have a trained model. That model, I'll be able to go into the Hugging Face Hub, take a look at it if I want to reuse it um, later down the road. And that's what I want to show you in the next step is once I've built that model, how we can use that for it. So we've trained the model now. Now I want to talk about using it for inference. The first thing we're going to do is this time we're going to grab the model and I have a version of it here that's sitting out there on the Hugging Face Hub. So we're going to download that from the Hugging Face Hub. That will take a minute here, as we'll see. And this is the model that I'm going to use for inference. And I do this because sometimes my collab environment dies on me, reconnects. So I like to have a way where I can grab the model from scratch and not rely on the one that I just previously trained. Okay, so we've pulled that down from the hub. Now we're going to go ahead, move that model over to the GPU because that's where it's going to run a little faster for us. Next, we're going to set up the pre-processing. This is similar to kind of what we did earlier. I've replicated the code here just so we're not relying on that earlier bits of code, but everything here is in this section for that. We're doing the same thing, kind of grabbing the labels. And now to get predictions, we're just going to pass that input through the model. We can then take that. We're going to be able to kind of build bounding boxes on that. I'm going to go ahead and set the feature names that we have, kind of get the labels, again, like all the stuff we've done. And this will allow us to now get the predictions. So you can see here, the predictions is just looking at the top ones, figuring out what the top, um, the top value is for that in terms of class identifying that, identifying the boxes for that. And then here's the beautiful part. We can now take all that information. We have a little bit of a script here to draw an image. And now I'm able to identify, you know, where's those places that has those tokens that we know what classes they are and put a bounding box around them with what class it is. I went through that fine, but you'll work your way through that code. It's a repeat of the earlier code there. And for kind of any simp single example, you're able to get the um, result. The other question I get asked is, okay, that's a single example. What happens if I have a big batch? Is there an easier way to do that? Um, let's talk about, let's do the same thing. So we're going to go back through the same thing. I, I put, Again, I put the replicate, duplicated the code. Just so if you were, that's what your focus was on, we can have it. So again, we're pre-processing. We have the features. Our metrics for evaluation are here. And we're going to pre-process that data set. Now, in this case, you'll see I'm using the validation part of it. Earlier, I used the train and the um, test. So now we're pre-processing a new part because this is a held out section that I want to see how my model is doing on this large piece here. So give that a second 
to pre-process and load, and then we will get to it. All right, now that's done, one of the things we can do is actually use the trainer to help us do predictions. And you can see there's some commands here where in the trainer, we're gonna tell it we don't wanna train, but we do wanna do predictions and what the size of the batch is. And for me, this is a nice convenient way for kind of doing batch inference is now I can just say, hey, trainer, run the predict here on this particular data set, pull out the predictions, the labels and the metrics here. And I can go ahead and take a look at the final metrics there are and see the overall accuracy, see the F1 score, all of that stuff as well. Now, this was an example where I had an evaluation data set where I already knew the labels. If you don't already have the labels at inference time, that's still possible. Niels has a link here walking through kind of how you would do that using the offset mapping. All right, thanks everyone. I hope this was useful for kind of going from start to beginning with a receipt database, with layout LM, showing you how to do the fine tuning. Let me know if you have comments and what I should do next. Thank you.